Hey, 8th graders, it's week 13. It's our last full week. Remember that week 14 will be just a three-day week. We're on lesson two or on textbook page 388 to 389, still topic eight, lesson one. Let's start off with a quiz. Locations in the middle of a continent experience what type of climate conditions? So remember, if you're in the middle of a continent, you are usually too far away from a body of water to be affected by it. So will you have A, cold winters, hot summers, B, dry air, C, mild winters and cool summers, or D, none of the above? Five, four, three, two, one. One. I'm going to eliminate mild winters and cool summers. Remember, this happens on locations that are close to the water, like coastal towns. And one of the reasons people like to vacation in coastal towns is because it basically has perfect weather all year round. Not too cold in the winter, not too hot in the summer. So correct answer is cold winters and hot summers if you're smack in the middle of the continent and again you are too far away from a body of water to be affected by it or influenced by it. Today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. The goal of today is going to learn about factors that affect precipitation and remember that precipitation is a fancy dancy science word for rain. We're gonna learn about three factors that affect precipitation or rain. Number one is going to be prevailing winds. Those are winds that blow long distances across the globe. Two is mountain ranges. A mountain range is just a group of mountains hanging out together. Well, they're not really gonna move that much because they're mountains. And three is seasonal winds. So we'll learn more about that. I laughed way too hard at that gift, but look at that. That little girl, she's going away with the wind. All right, let's talk about prevailing winds. We did learn about these before. So these are winds that blow long distances. And I know this, it looks like that, or this diagram looks like the earth is wearing a puffy winter jacket and it's got little like clouds around it. Those are not clouds. Those are actually wind belts. So let's learn more about prevailing winds. So they are winds that usually blow in one direction, not the band, just one direction over a large distance. So they are organized into belts that move air masses of different temperatures and humidities over long distances. So what's humidity? What's humidities? It's the amount of moisture that the air can hold. So if it's a summer day and it's warm and you're feeling really sticky, like you're going to stick to a sea or that you're just covered in sweat, that's usually because the humidity is high. Um, and that's just, there's just a lot of moisture in the air that feels like you're almost wearing like a hot blanket. Okay, so the amount of humidity that the wind belt has will determine how much rain or in colder temperatures, snow will fall. So wind belts are going to determine how much rain or snow that you have. Let's talk about how mountain ranges can determine how much precipitation happens in an area. So this diagram is from your textbook. It's on page 389. And what we're watching right now is we're watching wind blow in from an ocean over a mountain range, which are a group of mountains hanging out together. Um, so follow the red arrows that's showing you the wind blowing from the ocean to the mountain and over. So the first thing that's going to happen is warm, moist air is going to blow in from the ocean. From this specific ocean, it's the Pacific, but it doesn't really matter. It can be any ocean. All right, and so it blows in from the ocean onto the land, and we're going to kind of lose some moisture as we're traveling this distance. So as it blows into land, it's going to use lose some of that moisture, lose some of that humidity. So it's going to be a little bit drier. And when it finally goes over the mountain, it's pretty dry. And that dry air is going to continue onto the land after passing the mountain. So moral of the story, after passing over mountain ranges, air masses are cooler and drier. So if you're on the side of the mountain facing away from the wind, you have very little rain or precipitation. 
All right, our last factor that affects precipitation that we're going to talk about are seasonal winds. So a seasonal change in wind patterns and precipitation is called a monsoon. These occur in southern Asia off the Indian Ocean, and the reason they occur is because the different rates in heating between the ocean and the nearby land. Remember that the ocean warms up and cools down five times slower than land. So in summer, the land in South Southern Asia is going to be warmer than the ocean. So warm, humid winds, that means uh, winds that are warm in temperature and have a lot of moisture, are going to blow towards land. And these are going to create heavy, heavy rains. The opposite is going to happen in the summer. The land is going to be cooler than the ocean, so we're going to have cool, dry winds blow towards land. So it's like two really big differences. Um, between summer and winter so i guess if you're going to southern asia i wouldn't recommend going in the summer because you're going to hit monsoon season all right let's do a little quiz after passing over mountain ranges air masses are a cooler and drier b humid and cooler c warm and dry d the same as they were before five four three two one. All right, before I go any further, please see that there is a picture with your question. That always means that you should use a picture to answer your questions. If you can't read this very well, it's on textbook page 389. All right, so I'm going to eliminate some answers. First one is D. Um, it, they're not going to stay the same as they were before. Um, so I can cross that one right away. I'm also going to get rid of B because as you go off the ocean towards the land, you're going to lose some of your moisture. So you're not going to be as humid. Correct answer is A, cooler and drier. So air masses will be cooler and drier after they pass mountain ranges. Okay, guys, that is it for today. Please remember tomorrow is a working Wednesday, your second to last working Wednesday, and I'll see you back here tomorrow.